character balance. Uh-oh. Character balance in fighting games. Uh-oh. This is something a lot of people have a lot of feelings about. So here we're on the character select screen, right? You see this? Look at this. We had Milia. Love Milia. Yeah, Nago. Shout out to Nago. Jacko. Hashtag Jacko Challenge. OnlyFans. Leo. Chip. He's a ninja who is loud as fuck for no reason. You guys notice anything about all these characters? Brilliant scientist right here. Kyle, the most normal guy in the league. Garuda Impact, my favorite RPG on PS4. You know what's funny? They are different characters. Okay? This is where we have to start. They're very different. They're not even different characters. They're very different characters. So, one thing is there's always, oh, I love this character, fuck this character. Everyone has this, their fuck this character. People say fuck Soul. I say fuck Potemkin. People say fuck Eno, fuck Happy Chaos, fuck Giovanna, literally, wink, wink. Fuck Axel, like, you know. This is actually a good thing. There should never be a game where people like... Okay, I shouldn't say it like that. Uh, I will say it like that. Overall, characters should be polarizing. It shouldn't be that the majority of people playing the game should like every single character in the game. Because the characters are different, we become attached to them and we don't like the things that they struggle against and we like the things that they're good at. That's just natural. Million players are going to like things that Potemkin players hate. Ram players are going to like things that Zato players hate. And on and on and on. This is what makes the games interesting. This is what makes our experiences different. And the characters have to do different things because players like to do different things. And we just have to accept that. Which leads me to characters are inherently unbalanced. Everyone knows this though. Because the characters are different and they all do different things, the games will never be truly balanced. One really fucking lazy thing that people say is they, they always beg for nerfs and they always want the game to be balanced and the devs listen to them. And then we get games like BBCS Extend, BBCP Extend, where everyone's like, oh, now I don't want to play because the game is boring. And back at Cadenza version B2. Oh, now you balance the game, the game's boring, I don't want to play. So the games are gonna be unbalanced because they all do different shit. Zato controls two characters at the same time. Eno can't move normally, has super aggressive offense when she gets in, explosive with meter. S buttons, special moves, this character has special moves. It's Kyle, punches you in the fucking face, does 80%. This dude's on crack, elegance, smarts, wits, perfection. You have to thread the needle or you're fucking dead. These characters all do different things, they all win in different ways, and the game is interesting because they all do different things and they all win in different ways. The most balanced game is a game where you can only pick Soul, or you can only pick Ryu, or you can only pick Narakami, or you can only pick Mario, or whatever. Because the only way you have a true, 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 absolutely 100% balanced game is if there's only one character. Because even with the addition of another character that could do different things, it, interactions are going to happen and something is going to be better. Even if it's only slightly better, something's going to be better than something else. The extreme, of course, is chess, right? Chess, both players have the same pieces. It's just one side gets to go first. That's it. Even in a game like that, there's a differentiator. A game that people have played for hundreds of years. We can move from that though. So these games are very different. They do a good job, honestly, in modern, in modern day games. And this probably deserves its own video. I think they do a good job of making the games more fair. They kind of have to play it safe. You, you see a lot of like safe-ish designs early in games, but they do a good job compared to before. But I feel like I could say safely, especially at this point, it's been six months. These characters all play quite differently and they all do different things. An easy way to make characters balance without having just everyone be sold the easy way is to make everyone goku and actually i'm lying the easy way is to make everyone bardock because remember what i said this game dragon ball fighters is based off fucking bardock everybody in this game is bardock and what i really mean to say is that when dragon ball fighters came out like now this game is four years old now right 2018 2019 2020 2021 this game is an old game when this game came out the big 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 complaint about this game is that too many characters felt the same why? Because a lot of characters have the same shell. There's a couple of characters that they base every fucking character in the game on and they just make little tweaks. So the big differentiators between the characters is not the characters themselves, because a lot of characters play similarly, but the teams that people build. For example, my good old... It, it hurts. It hurts, but we'll even get the colors too, for old time's sake. So the old team, this was my last team, right? Of extremely unique team. Defensive team with strong knockdown and a lot of damage. But you didn't have to play this way. 
uh, the team that won season one. So not really any long range stuff in your face. Again, the characters play pretty similarly overall. The differences in between the entire team, the entire team, what you're trying to do with the whole team. There are some advantages to the characters being similar besides balance. So this game didn't start off balanced, but overall, I would say in Dragon Ball Fighters history, to the point that some people got annoyed at how some people would rank the characters like S, S minus, A plus, A. Some people got pissed off about that. Hold that. The characters are fucking really similar and they're all good and it's fine. You should be happy that the characters are all good. Okay? Anyway. <clears throat> One of the biggest advantages is that it's really easy to pick up new characters. So in this game, if you have played this character, this character, or this character, you can play so many fucking characters in this game. There are many, 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 many characters in this game. Basically, the, the characters that don't play like other characters are very few. The MVP, Videl, Roshi, Piccolo, Beerus, Hit. Uh, there's a handful of others at this point. Frieza. At this point, there's a few. Uh, but they've been adding and tweaking things over time. And in the original cast, really almost all the characters were uh the same now again in my opinion it's not bad that they did this because one this game is aimed for new players two it makes it easy for you to pick up new characters which is great and then three the differentiators is uh how you build your team not what characters you pick necessarily the last point i want to make too is that the games that people like the most are games that aren't really super well balanced i i call it character power it's literally how strong the character's tools are so this game the character power is way higher than strive right there's stuff you can, people complain about in strives like mids that are plus and like all these characters have a command grab where in this game you have things like like super powerful looping oki like n neutral where everything converts and his pressure like everything turns at the plus 10 and like he's constantly making you gamble can combo off his throw various win conditions between unblockable loops uh, high pressure, super fast offense is all plus that also a command grab that she can call buff that does more damage and she has a good set play. Like characters have a lot of strong shit in this game. And people will complain and complain and complain about other people's shit, but they'll love the bullshit they're doing to you. So we came full circle. Some of the fighting game community's most loved games are some of the most unfair games. People will try to tell you uh, the best the best way to balance a game is just make everyone broken. I personally think that lazy but also true what they're telling you is they just really like super strong strategies that they could just do to you they want to do it to you i like finding games where i feel like we're engaging a lot and it's a lot about the strategy but it's not just this game and this game is not that type of game by the way there's a ton of strategy that goes into playing guilty gear exit and guilty gear acr because the characters are so strong but also your character is strong you and your opponent are both playing strong characters. So there's a lot of strategies you can make around each other. And as you tweak and tweak and tweak and get more and more you know, optimal, you can develop more stuff. One of the most popular games in fighting in history is Marvel's Capcom 3. And that's a game that's full of nonsense. But people love it because of high character power and they could do really powerful shit. Those are some truths about balance you may or may not have heard of. Any questions, friends? Any questions?